Hey, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll be showing you how to model a hypothetical value add office investment using the all in one model for underwriting real estate acquisition and development deals. Now, the genesis of this tutorial is a question we received in the all in one support forum asking specifically how to model a value add office deal with no debt and some. Uh, non-stabilized in place rent roll operation etc and so while I don't have the specifics for the deal that the questioner is posing I know enough where I can uh, come up with some hypothetical assumptions and then using those hypothetical assumptions model uh, that this hypothetical deal in the all-in-one now before I get into it I should mention there are two methods for underwriting value add deals using the all in one. Now, the first method would be you use the development module, which involves construction financing, or you might consider that a bridge loan during the non stabilized period, during the renovation period and the lease up. And at the point of stabilization, that bridge loan is taken out by a permanent loan, and then there's an oper a stabilized operating period from then through to the end of the whole period. And that first method you'd likely use in cases where you have a complex budget timing schedule where you really want to model out in detail the renovation cash flows. There's not going to be a lot of operating income during that renovation period. And it's more for kind of redevelopment type value add deals. The second method is you buy an existing building, maybe it's empty, maybe it's under occupied. You put some money in it over a period of time during the lease up. And then at the end of kind of that renovation and lease up period, you hit stabilization and either you sell or you hold through to the end of some hold period. And in the second method, instead of using the development module, you use the acquisition module. And then you model out the renovation cash flows in the other CapEx line. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll need are the assumptions if you want to follow along. And you can download those in the post attached to this video. If you're watching this video on YouTube, look in the comments below and there'll be a link to go over and, and find these assumptions. And they're both in PDF format or appended to the end of the uh, post. And with these assumptions, we'll then open the most recent version of the all-in-one. In this case, I'm using version 5.5. And I'm gonna start here on the summary tab. Now, the first thing is I want, to, I want to activate the modules that I need. Well, I don't need the permanent financing, mo financing module. There'll be no debt on this deal. I will need to set the property type to office and then make the ORI tabs visible. And now the, now the model is set up with all of the tabs that I need. And I'm just gonna fill out first the description. And so I'll pause the video, fill out the description, come back to you. And with this description complete, I'm gonna move up here, and this is only a three year hold. So there will be renovation in years one and two then I'll have one full year of stabilized occupancy and that'll just help season the operation so I can sell at the end of the third year. The analysis start date being January 1st, 2018 with my growth begin date being 12 months following that. Now again, I'm leaving the development length at zero, which means this will be modeled as an acquisition uh, without using the development module. The next thing we see over here on our assumptions we're assuming a market NOI cap rate of 6% with no growth in that cap rate through to our exit. And then we're assuming 2% in selling costs at reversion. We're also assuming we can buy this building in place at 3.25 million with about $75,000 in acquisition costs. So we come back here, again, we set this cap rate oops, to 6%. No annual change in the cap rate. 3250 for the acquisition price. 
and then due diligence 75,000. Now you'll notice blue font cells are required inputs whereas orange font cells are optional. In these orange font cells there are formulas that are recommended but don't necessarily always apply and in this case it's certainly the case. So in this case the orange was draw was drawing from the present value or, or whatever value this model was spitting out for the acquisition price and sometimes that may be the case but here uh, we will be buying it below its uh, its stabilized value at some in place value and in this case 3.25 million thus we change that orange font cell and we're going to do that a couple times in this particular value add deal lastly and this isn't too important but I'm going to set a discount rate of 8% here and all that's doing is it's driving some present value of the deal's cash flows discounted at that 8%. And that'll just give us a feel for what the present value at stabilization for, for this opportunity uh, would be. And with that, we can move to uh, model out the operation. So we're going to go to the ORI dash rent roll tab, and we're going to first drop in this rent roll. Now, there are six tenants. And you can see the rent roll here. And so I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to drop in these six tenants and the various assumptions for these tenants, and I'll be right back. So I've modeled out the rent roll. Now you'll notice that I don't make mention of the future tenant assumptions. And the reason is this tutorial isn't meant to teach you how to use the office retail industrial rent roll. You can find that on the retail development uh, walkthrough. In this case, I'm more talking about just how to model out a value add deal. So with the rent roll in place, I now wanna move to my ORI dash opstat tab or my operating statement tab. And I have some assumptions for income. So for a first other income, I have a 3% growth rate on each one of those items with no parking income, 15,000 a year in antenna income, which is fixed, meaning it starts as of analysis begin date. Miscellaneous income of 7,500, which is 100% variable, 0% fixed, which means it's, it's, this 7,500 is tied to physical occupancy. Again, though, these are growing by 3%. Thus, in year three, our first stabilized year, it's 7782 versus our 7500 as of today. Next, uh, we are going to drop in our operating expenses. First, our growth rates here are 2% for each one of these items. And then in terms of expenses, we have here payroll at $1.75 a foot. Uh, general and administrative at 50 cents a foot, utilities at 225 a foot, et cetera. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna drop these in, I'll pause the video and I'll be right back. And then in terms of percentage fixed, you'll see that here, uh, all are 0% uh, fixed except for taxes and insurance, which are at 100% for insurance, 75% for taxes. So we can just set these to zero, taxes to 75, insurance at 100. And then our non-reimbursable is at uh, half a percent of EGI. So I just go ahead and change this to half a percent. So now we've modeled to NOI. Now you'll notice that this is negative for our, for our stabilized year. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And the reason is, again, you'll see another orange font cell here. This is calculating the estimated first stabilized year. And in the case of value add, that needs to be manually entered. So in this case, we again assumed uh, two years of renovation and lease up. So the third year is our first full year of stabilized cash flows. And you'll see as soon as I do that, our stabilized NOI now becomes what we expect it to be. Finally, let's get into CapEx. And this is where we model out the renovation costs. So you can ignore the tenant improvements and leasing commissions. Those are orange font cells and, and if if you were to cap, so if when you're doing your direct cap 
um, valuation. Uh, currently, it's defaulted to do a direct cap off of NOI. If you do a direct cap off of cash flow from operations, you'll want to uh, fine tune your TIs and LCs uh, on the stabilized basis to be kind of the average uh, per year. In this case, uh, that's not necessary uh, because we're capping NOI. Uh, and then in terms of capital reserve, 30 cents a foot. So 0.3 oops, equals 0.3 times NRA. 63.60. Actually, it should be 35 cents a foot. So let's change that. And now we get to the fun part. So we have a budget for renovations right here. We've got some lobby expenses. We're going to upgrade the bathrooms, do some exterior upgrades. There's some deferred maintenance that needs to be covered, and there's soft costs involved with that. In all, we're going to spend $540,000 to bring this building up to market. And so how do we account for that? Well, we're gonna come again to this the ORI operating statement tab. And down below in the monthly operating statement section, you'll notice this line, other CapEx, these are orange font cells. Again, the default is you drop some value into here, 50,000 as an example, and then down below, again, orange font, it just automatically takes that 50,000, straight lines it each month, and that becomes the other CapEx. But instead, we're gonna zero it out up top here, and we're going to hard code in the values. Oh, I'll show you how, not technically hard code, but we're going to custom model our renovation cash flows for this 540,000 in, in upgrades and the like. And to do that, I'm just going to come and I'm going to create a new tab. Again, the, the, the beauty of Excel is we can do this custom modeling. And with that, I'm then going to model out 24 months, two years of renovation cash flows. So I'll start with a header. I'm going to go out 24 months. I'm almost there. Okay. And then again, I have five budget items, lobby, bathrooms, exterior, deferred maintenance, and then finally soft costs. And I'll have a total line. I'm gonna set all of these. I'm gonna hide this. Hide this. Great. Okay. And then I'm going to have two columns here. And this first column is my budget. And then I'm going to do an air check column. And what this air check column is going to do is it's going to take the sum of all of the cash flows that I put out into there to confirm that it matches the budget. Okay. I'm going to underline that. I'm going to sum up that. This becomes the sum row, all right? So these are the, these are summing each one of these columns. And I'm just going to drop in the budget right here: 250 for lobby, 50,000 for bathrooms, 100,000 for uh, exterior, deferred maintenance, 75,000, and 65,000 for soft costs. When I total that up again, convert that to numbers. And now I need to model these cash flows. Well, the lobby is going to be a 12 month project. I'm just gonna straight line that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all 12 of these cells and I'm gonna write equals 250 divided by 12. And then I'm going to hit control enter. And when I hit control enter, it's gonna, it's going to write that formula in all 12 of the selected cells. And then my check equals my budget. Bathrooms is a similar thing, right? Equals 50,000 divided by 12. And then exterior is 24 months. And that is 100,000. Oops. Equals 100,000 divided by 24. Deferred maintenance and soft costs are also 24 months. So deferred maintenance. My 24 
and soft costs, 65 divided by 24. And with that, my check equals my budget, right? And I've now modeled out my renovation cash flows. Okay, this is what I'm going to spend on uh, improving the property. And then I'm going to come back to my operating statement. And here's month one of my other CapEx. And I'm just going to link this month to month one total here. There's 35,000. And then I'm going to copy over through to the end of month 24. Copy as formulas, right? Or I'm going to be linking each one of those formulas over. And then all I'm going to do is to confirm, I'm going to select all of those cells. And then down below here, sum 540. So I know all of those have come over. You can also see them now as we scroll up to the annual. 420 in year one, 120 in year two gives us the 540,000. And with that done, uh, we're pretty much ready. Now there is no partnership in this uh, particular hypothetical. And so I'm gonna come to the ca equity cash flow tab and just set the sponsor to 0%. And all that does is it turns off the partnership waterfall. And now we can come to the property cash flow report. We can see the cash flows in each year. Again, one year, year one, two, and three, which is our entire analysis period. And here's the unlevered cash flow, right? We have 3.325 million in time zero. That's our acquisition. That's 3.25 million plus our acquisition costs. In year one, we have a net uh, cash flow of minus almost 600,000. Year two, and then year three, we have a combination of some positive operating cash flow plus our residual or our sales price, less our 2% selling costs give us a positive cash flow in year three of 6.2 million. That gives us an unlevered IRR on an annual basis of 14.85% and an equity multiple of almost one and a half times. We can also see that summarized here on the summary tab. And we see here returns on a monthly and annual basis. And with that, We've used the all-in-one model to uh, underwrite a office value-add investment. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me, and thanks for your time.